Well, let's move to Exodus chapter 2 and read verse 23. Now it happened in the process of time that the king of Egypt died. And then the children of Israel groaned because of the bondage, and they cried out, and their cry came up to God because of the bondage. So Hashem heard their groaning, and God remembered his covenant with Abraham, with Isaac, and with Jacob. And God looked upon the children of Israel, and he acknowledged them. So now the Israelites are crying out to God, desperately crying out and groaning to God. And God heard their groaning. I can relate to this very much. I shared a little of this last night. But I can definitely relate to crying out to God when I hit rock bottom. I'll just quickly tell you that in the 1960s and 70s I was uh, a rock star and unfortunately the whole lifestyle that came with that I was addicted to drugs very heavily and also I had was living a, a dark existence, if you will, doing these dark drugs and attending dark nightclubs and dark drug parties. I, even the songs I was writing, they were, they were dark. And that was my life for, for, for many years. I hurt a lot of people, a lot of people hurt me. I nearly died on several occasions going off a cliff on a motorcycle in Boulder, Colorado, nearly drowned in Puerto Rico. I walked away from several what should have been fatal car accidents. And then on Thanksgiving Day, 1970, I'll never forget it, I threw a, a wild drug party for a lot of my friends from New York City and I was living upstate in New York on a ranch with horses and we all took too much drugs. And I turned purple and I stopped breathing. I passed out. And then somehow one of my friends had his act together enough to get me to the hospital. And on the way to the hospital, I had this dream. I dreamt I was lying on a pile of hay in a barn. And I looked up on the wall and, there, and in the opening appeared the burning bush that Moses saw. And then at the tips of the flames, they were musical notes. They were black, but then they turned white and they started to jingle and I heard a voice speak to me. And he said, my son, I'm giving you your life back to do some work for me. Don't blow it this time. Well, I woke up in the hospital my friend who got me there was still there. He was actually holding my hand. I thought we were in heaven now. I thought for sure I was dead. But he said, no, miraculously, you came back to life. And you would think from that point on that I would, would have listened to what God said to me in that dream. But I still remained the same person for seven more years. And then I finally came to Eureka Springs, Arkansas. And I was acting in the Passion Play. And one of the first parts they gave me was hanging on the cross next to Yeshua, next to Jesus. And I was the bad cross thief the first night. The one who says, ah, if you are the Son of God, come down and save yourself and save us. The second night I was on the other side of Yeshua. I was the repentant cross thief. And I'll never forget my big line when I looked over to Yeshua and I said, Jesus, Remember me when you come into your kingdom. And this fellow looked back at me, and he wasn't, I don't think he was a believer, he was just a paid actor, but he said, today you will be with me in paradise. And something penetrated me when he said those words. Later on that night, I was driving back to uh, this little house or log cabin in the backwoods of Arkansas where I was staying. And I started thinking about this, you know, growing up in New York City as, as a Jew, I never really heard the gospel. I knew about 
Jesus, but I never really heard the gospel story. But in this play, I saw what they did to him. I saw how they how they spit on him and how they mocked him and how they pressed the crown of thorns deep into his scalp and how they whipped him and how they drove long spikes into his wrists and into his feet. They murdered him. And I started realizing something that this was a play, but this really happened 2,000 years ago and he, he took it for me. He did this for me. So something is building now inside of me as I'm driving out to this cabin and I'm starting to remember all of the sin in my life. Spiritually, I could smell the rottenness of it. And I knew that something had to change. I had to make a change. Because if I didn't, I, I really believed I was gonna die. I get out to this cabin and I lit a candle, put it on a dresser, started walking around the room, pacing around the room. And I could feel a tug from side to side. Either I'm gonna stay that old, same person or something's gotta happen. And so uh, I finally worked up enough holy chutzpah and I started pounding on this dresser over and over. And something welled up deep inside of me and I cried out and cried out and travailed and groaned to God. And I cried, Abba! Abba, Father, save me. Change me. I don't want to be that person anymore. And I fell asleep, crying. I woke up in the middle of the night. And for a moment, I thought I was still dreaming, but then I realized I was really still awake. And I could feel the presence of pure holiness in the room with me. And right at that moment, the same, I know it sounds crazy, the same voice that spoke to me in my dream seven years earlier when I OD'd, spoke to me and this time he said, my son, I've heard your prayer. I've heard your prayer. And from this day on, I have brand new life for you through my son, Jesus. And as soon as he said the name of Yeshua, the name of Jesus, I felt the Holy Spirit just come in to the top of my head, fill me up to the bottom of my feet. And I knew that I was born again. Hallelujah. And praise the Lord. Because I found out that uh, some Christians were baptizing some fellow in a nearby lake. I also found out that they had been doing a lot of praying for me. I mean, I was big news. I was representing about half the Jewish population in the state of Arkansas. <laughs> and so the other half was my sister. And, you know, they, so they were praying for me and they invited me to come out to this lake and sure enough, after this fellow went into the water, I went into the water and I'll never forget it. This is 37 years ago, I'll never forget it, but I went down in the water and I just knew that that old Jeremy Storch was dead down there. I left him down there. I came up out of the water, hallelujah, feeling so clean, feeling born again. I was even singing in my heavenly prayer language. Hallelujah. And ever since then, I've never stopped singing for the Lord. I've been singing for Him all of these years. Hallelujah. How many of you know God is in the business of changing lives? In that 24-hour period, He took me from being a long-haired, strung-out, rock-and-roll junkie and changed me into a spirit-filled, messianic Jewish rabbi and worship leader for the kingdom of heaven. God hears our cries. He hears our groaning. 